Okay, so this is the main menu for Filmic Pro. It looks the same across all Android devices. As well, this part of the video, I'll just run through each of the features and show you how you can use those to your advantage to help you fine tune the image to get you better video on your P30 Pro. So then, starting with these two icons in the middle of the screen. So this rectangle here is the focus reticle and the circle is for exposure. So you can just see the Cheerios box is slightly out of focus. So if I move the focus reticle and I just push that once, that then brings the box into focus. And similarly with the exposure control, if I move this around, it sets the exposure priority on that particular area of the image. So what I can do is just push them and that then locks those particular values. So whatever I do as I move them around, the whole image is locked and it will not change. So down the bottom left-hand corner then, we've got the imaging panel. Now this allows you control over the white balance. Now, prior to May the 3rd, there was the log profile available and fine tuning over color, but that has now been removed due to a device driver issue for the Huawei P30 Pro. I'm not sure if Filmic Pro will reintroduce that in a later update. They are working hard to rectify that, but for the time being, I can't show you the log profile, which allows you to desaturate the whole image, and then that makes it much easier to edit later on in your chosen editing application. So with the white balance, you then got options then to tune the image with these presets. We've got uh, lighting, so that's interior lighting. We've got sunlight, cloudy day or outdoors, incandescent lighting, which is for LED lights inside, for example. Uh, we've then got these A and B profiles, and then we've got the automatic white balance, which I choose to leave on, because I think it does a pretty good job of balancing the image anyway. So next is then we've got the manual controls. If I push that, that then swings in the exposure and the focus slider. So you can see if I just move the exposure arc, that then increases or decreases the exposure accordingly. Underneath is the shutter speed, and the three circles you can see in between there helps you to set the priorities for each exposure and shutter speed value. Across on the right hand side with the focus slide you can see there allows us to adjust in real time so I can get priority on the Cheerios box and then priority across the whole image. Underneath got an option for zoom so this is manual digital zoom. There is control over the periscope camera which I'll show you in a moment but that is how you can use that there. Okay so next to the manual controls you've got the live analytics so all that allows you to do is really fine tune the image and look at areas which are under or overexposed and then use the manual controls to help you get the best results. So if I push the first option, this is zebra stripes. So the red areas are overexposed and the blue areas are underexposed. We can see if I move the arc slider, that allows the image to be fine tuned. Now it's not ideal conditions, but I just wanted to show you how this works to allow you to really get some control over the image. So next then we've got the clipping. So basically anything in blue is where data has been completely lost. And also you can see there the red part as well is where it's completely overexposed. We've lost detail in that part of the image. We've then got the false color. So this shows you a complete picture of the video's, video's exposure profile. So anything green is good. And anything in red indicates any overexposure and as per the zebra stripes anything in blue is where the image is underexposed if i just switch this off that is how the image looks at the moment it doesn't look too bad it is quite dark but you could also lift the shadows later on with your editing app and then finally we've got the focus peaking option so if you've used a panasonic dslr i believe some others have it as well the areas in green is where the focus is correct and so if i move this then can see that there's no green areas but if I start moving the arc slider the areas which have the green outline means that that part of the image is then correctly focused so they are the manual controls I'm just going to switch those off and go back to automatic now the part in the middle here at the bottom uh, this is your main area to show you the timeline uh, just off the left you can see it's at 3k at 30 frames per second the bottom here We've got the clipping for the audio so you can drag that slider and that adjusts the amount of clipping you get on the audio so basically it's like a master volume control and you can see just off to the right of the image you've got the audio levels which will be basically adjusted so for example if it's a very loud environment you can move this to lower the master volume gain and stop any clipping into the microphone just off to the right of that we've got the battery indicator and the small so you can see there uh, with three quarters full is basically your internal storage. I can also push this 
and that then moves through the different histograms to see live analytics on your video. So next to the head up display, we've got the settings option. So this allows you control over your resolutions. So it's currently locked to the limitations of the hardware. So it's 4K 30 frames per second. But you can also step back through these different resolutions here. So 1080p allows you the most freedom over frame rates. So you can see if I go to the frame rate, it then unlocks 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. If you really wanted, you could film at 120 FPS and you go all the way back to 24 FPS and that allows you to really have some buttery smooth slow motion footage which is locked at 30. And you've got auto shutter, 50 hertz shutter and 60 hertz shutter. So with resolution you've also got these aspect ratio controls you can see here that adjusts those in real time and that allows you to actually add a native uh, black bars at the top and bottom for the resolution so you can film in a kind of cinem cinematic style. Good old 4x3, slightly more very narrow wider cinematic style 2 1 1 to 1 for social media 3 by 2 17 9 or 16 by 9 then got control over audio so you can use uh, the controls for the built-in microphone or an external mic through the USB-C adapter so they've got presets so basically the things I was showing you with the exposure and the focus if you wanted to save that as a preset including any white balance you can then easily go back to that it's something I would recommend because it helps you to just go in and have one tap in the preset and then everything is set up correctly for you then got the content management system so I don't have an SD card in the phone so it's basically internal storage only but I could plug in an external SSD if I wanted and it would actually then record to that directly you then got options for different hardware support so you've got some third-party accessories here such as the DJI Osmo Mobile, the Xiaomi Smooth 4, etc. And that allows you to directly control those app, those accessories via the Filmic Pro app, which is very, very handy. They've got control over the different lenses. So the mid lens is currently supported, but you can also have the wide angle camera. So you can see we've got a much greater look at the surroundings now. But if I go back and select the mid lens, you can see everything gets a bit closer. You can also select the telephoto lens. This now supports the zoom lens so if you look at the zoom level here so anything if i look at the slider so if i just start moving where there's a green part on the slide there that means that it is good detail you've got the grid guide on the screen you can switch that on and off and then we've got information such as quick start guide user manual tutorials which shows you a number of youtube videos the support page and the current build number which is build 541 so next up then you've got the currently recorded clips and you can actually click on those and you can bring up a menu and you can trim you can adjust the image qualities etc etc so next to this then we've got the record button which is the circle you put basically push that to record and you push it again to stop the recording so that is everything that is all the settings and all of the menus available on the Filmic Pro app. I'll now show you some footage that I've recorded with the application and my gimbal so you can see how the video looks. So this is the front facing camera then using Filmic Pro and I've currently got the phone in a gimbal to allow for nice smooth motion. Now what Filmic Pro essentially allows the phone to do is rid itself of the limitations which are set by the hardware. So it removes the electronic image stabilization and with that it removes the crop from the image so for electronic image stabilization as you may or may not know it crops in the image slightly and then uses the edges that you can't see to help stabilize the image now what Filmic Pro also allows you to do is to increase the resolution of the front facing camera to what it's actually capable of and we're currently recording in 3k resolution so it doesn't quite support 4k like some phones do but this is 3k resolution from the front facing camera and I've used the built-in exposure controls which I showed you earlier with the controls walkthrough on the app to set the exposure so everything is nice and evenly exposed so you see the sky behind me here with the main camera app that would actually be overexposed but with the exposure locked everything is nicely exposed and everything is kept even rather than the kind of fluctuations that you get using the built-in software for the phone not that it's bad it does a really good job but with this greater control you can see that the image i think is hugely improved 
Now, by using the gimbal, it keeps everything nice and steady. It's a shame that the app doesn't support optical image stabilization. But again, I think that is due to a driver issue. And I'm sure something that the Filmic Pro team can sort out in later revisions. So that is the front-facing camera. I want to switch to the rear camera and show you what that can do. But so this is the main 40 megapixel sensor. And again, I've set the exposure to be nice and even across the whole image. And it stops things like the sky blowing out in the distance. Now looking through the viewfinder, this image is pretty much exactly as I'm seeing it, which is great. And it just goes to show that by using an app like this, it really allows you to tap into the potential of what the P30 Pro is capable of using a third party application such as this. Just go up to the, the sun there, we can see, now usually if I do this, everything would just white out usually. So you look, you even retain an exposure down at the bottom of the trees there, which is brilliant. Okay, so this is now the wide angle lens. It's so wide, in fact, it's even picking up the part of the gimbal where you can balance the phone to obviously make sure that it's not lopsided. So I do apologize for that. distance you can see we've got lovely even exposure across the board apart from the phone having to make the adjustments by itself the app has basically done everything for me and you can see you get a really nice even image which is very very true to life even the sky usually can be quite over contrasty with the stock software but by using Filmic Pro and locking the exposure, we just get a really, really nice image. Now, there is a little bit of image stutter, and again, that is down to the Kirin 980 chip. But I've got to say, it's a huge improvement using this app. It just feels so much better. It just feels like this is what the phone was meant to do. So that is Filmic Pro for the Huawei P30 Pro. I think it makes a huge difference to the overall quality of the phone. Again, it removes those restrictions which have been placed on it by the hardware, namely the electronic image stabilization. By banishing that completely, it allows you to get complete control over the image, remove that crop, and things like the exposure control allows you to really get the most out of the front and rear cameras on the phone. So you let me know what you think. Leave a comment down in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, if you're new around here, then please consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos coming very, very soon on the channel. But for now, this has been my look at Filmic Pro for the Huawei P30 Pro. My name's Mr. West, and I'll catch you guys later.